Hi, and welcome to episode 10 of the Chess TDD series. I'm starting off in the same fashion I have been the last several episodes, which is to delete the things and get rid of my resting on my laurels and then move on to the next stuff to do. So kind of at the very end of the episode nine, I didn't have the queen move to its class where I wanted to do that. So now I'm going to do that very quickly. Also, for what it's worth, this is the first time I'm doing a recording audio cast on my new computer. So Hopefully everything goes smoothly here. Um, we shall see. Please feel free to leave uh, feedback in the comments or on YouTube if it doesn't. Um, so not much of a grand experiment, but it is something new that I thought I'd uh, make everyone aware of. So anyway, back to what I was uh, talking about. Today I'm going to be implementing Knight, which is the last remaining piece. And... I'm going to mark move queen to its own class as green, and then I'm going to move on to knight. And I'm going to proceed kind of in largely the same fashion that I did in defining the other pieces. I'm going to define a class called knight test. And then go through my usual rigmarole here of making that a test class. And starting to define internal classes and all of that. You should be pretty used to this pattern by now. One thing that I'll say, and, and I'm going to get to in a minute here, and today I actually have the advantage of having, for the first time since the very beginning, done the coding and recorded the audio in the same day, so I actually remember pretty much exactly what I did. Um, one thing I'm going to talk a little bit about here is you've noticed me kind of get into this rhythm of writing two tests. The first one I'll make pass with something kind of obtuse. The second one I'll get a little more algorithmic. Then I'll go back and sort of add my overhead where I remove duplication from the test methods themselves and I kind of proceed in this fashion. And one thing kind of as I'm doing this familiar thing and not necessarily narrating it verbatim that one thing I um, think worth mentioning is that I would suggest avoiding falling into a pattern that's a little too familiar. <clears throat> if you find yourself ever sort of coding brainlessly, even if you're not doing some of the cardinal sin type things like duplicating code or anything, Coding brainlessly generally isn't good. As software developers, we're knowledge workers. We should kind of always be thinking, thinking of ways to solve problems better. So don't let yourself get comfortable in routines. Don't take comfort in, you know, banging out the same code over and over again. If you're writing it over and over again, find a way to automate it, find a way to make it better. So anyway, I will uh, get to the point here in a minute where where you see what I'm talking about with my own uh, methodology here. So I'm doing something very familiar. I'm defining this get moves from method that takes a board coordinate and it takes a um, board size. And then as uh, we've seen in the last couple of episodes here, the, the quickest way to actually get this in place is going to be to implement the abstract class. So now I have this and it's only failing because I'm throwing an exception. So I'll return null and there it's passing. And now what I want to do is I want to assert what I'm saying here in the title of this test method. I want to assert that this uh, 3.2 exists. And of course it doesn't. Now what you're going to see that also looks pretty familiar is I'm going to do something pretty obtuse here. And I'm going to say, well, let's return this board coordinate that this test method is looking for, which is going to obviously make it pass. So yield return. And then um, I don't like that missing bit of code coverage here. So I think I went in and kind of quickly tried to do two list and then figure out, oh yeah, that's not going to work um, because I am returning one and I don't have an extension method to that effect. So I moved on. And now I'm going to do a similar kind of thing, which is um, just knowing how knights move. If you're not familiar, by the way, uh, knights move in an L shape. So two in one direction, one in the other it can be either X or Y uh, for the two and one. Um, so there's a fan out total of eight moves from a given piece if you're in the middle of the board, or I should say from a given space for a knight. Um, so if it returns 3-2 from 1-1, one, one, it should also return 2-3 from 1-1. One, one. So I'm going to kind of laboriously write this out again, and then I'm going to have it pass the same parameters. And I'm going to make a very similar looking assert except with the coordinates transposed. And now what I'm going to do is interesting, and, and I kind of wanted to do it this way to illustrate a point, which is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do another obtuse thing. Now, usually you start out obtuse and you get smarter with each um, test case that you introduce. But if you're not really sure in what direction you want to take this, and at the time of coding it, I wasn't because I wanted to do some maybe link magic, but I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do it. 
it's okay to do an obtuse thing again. These are both valid test cases that are going to need to pass later. So, you know, if, if that's what it takes to get your thought process going, then, Hey, great. So be it. Um, I wouldn't go on like that indefinitely. You need to form a plan eventually, but you can have a little bit of uh, room for error there. You don't always need to be getting smarter for the time being. You can sort of fudge it. Um, that's probably not the right way to put it, but you can, you can sort of put off getting smart. If you're introducing more valid test cases, there's nothing wrong with having them. And um, this is especially the case if it's maybe helping you think through the problem. So I wanted to mention that. Now, what I'm doing here is the kind of repetitive pattern that I was talking about where I'm sort of mindlessly repeating the same thing over and over again. So I've been doing this target um, and getting rid of the instantiation logic by abstracting into the parent class. But sooner or later here, I'm going to decide, you know, maybe there is a better way to do this. Maybe um, instead of having a definition for the board coordinate itself, which I had been doing in previous in, uh, incarnations of this, saying moves from 1-1 one, one or something. Maybe I want to define this method that I'm initially making static, but I'm about to realize here I can't because I'm referring to an instance member. So I'm going to define this get moves from method. And I think that that's going to be a nice way to wrap up this board coordinate stuff, but still give me the flexibility. Instead of saying from 1-1, one, one, I can say moves from x y and i never thought of this before and i'm o i only just thought of it as i was writing this code you know with a week or two or whatever perspective on it like hey maybe there's a better way to do this so i encourage you always to kind of be thinking even if you're familiar with it you think you've got a pretty good routine down a pretty good way of writing code always kind of revisit what you're doing now um, that's something i did well i'm going to point out as i'm making the mistake a mistake that i'm making right here which is if you'll notice in the bottom right i'm yellow I don't realize this, but I'm not compiling. And the reason I'm not compiling is because I have a test, a nested class named get moves from and a, a method, helper method named get moves from. So I did not notice as I was going along coding that my dots on the left were, while green, they're light green, meaning I'm not compiling. So I am refactoring while not compiling and I'm assuming that I'm green. So, you know, no matter how long you've been doing this, you're always gonna be prone to mistakes. It's pretty critical to go in and make sure that your um, code is constantly doing what you think it is. And right now, I'm not aware of it, but the code is not behaving the way I think it is. Luckily, I'm about to recover here with no harm done, because what's going to happen is I'm going to have a method I expect to go red, while the other ones I expect to stay green, because of the get moves from refactoring. Once I figure out and flounder a little bit to uh, decide why this isn't going red, oops, there we go already contains a definition, but in embarrassing moment, I still didn't get the hint. Um, I believe I did a control shift B to make it compile so I could actually click on what was wrong in there. Oh yeah, we can't have two things with the same name. So I just call this, I believe, get moves or moves from or something. Yep, there we go, get moves. So get moves um, makes this compile. And now I see, okay, my old tests are still passing and the new one is red, which is what I expected. So I didn't go back and redo my work. But if one of those other tests had been red, what I would have started to do is say, you know what, I'm getting too far ahead of myself here. I am going to hit control Z until I'm back in a state where everything was green and then revisit this. I probably should have done that anyway here, but uh, I'm cheating a little bit. Generally best not to cheat. Um, slap myself on the hand and move on because you've always got to balance pragmatism with um, doing things correctly. So now I'm back to actually doing an implementation here um, as I imagine this should go. So what I was going to start to do there is say starting location dot x plus two, starting location dot y plus one, and then I was going to apply that same logic to the next yield return statement. But then everything went green and um, what I probably am not going to do at that point is um, is go on. I could, uh, and I could consider that a refactoring, but I thought, you know, this is a decent opportunity to write another test that's going to be failing and just kind of tease out test cases. In that scenario, it's really kind of a judgment call whether I want to do a refactoring or whether I want to um, stage this as in order to change production code. Um, I need another failing test. This is kind of a strange case. Usually, if you want new behavior coming out of it, you need a new test. But I could have also just refactored that and um, 
I would have gotten that behavior. So now for a couple of cases near sort of the edge of the board, I have, um, I have everything passing. So what I'm going to start to do is actually flesh out the algorithm here. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to pick up space on the board. Um, I'm going to pick three, three that can actually get me all eight of the night moves. Oh, maybe I did that in another minute here. Um, oh yeah. I started out by, um, wanting to go in a different direction. So returns four one for two two this is the first one where i'm not strictly adding so x plus two or x plus one y plus two or y plus one i'm going to actually have to write a case here where i'm doing um it looks like uh, y minus one while doing x plus two so i do a quick duplication of the line and then i'm going to go back and change the pluses and minuses and uh, the numbers as needed here so there we have it i am going to say not only do I want x plus 2, y plus 1, but x plus 2, y minus 1. And I think it was at this point that I started deciding I wanted to orient around um, 3, 3. Maybe after a little bit of deliberating here. I remember at some point having an epiphany that um, it would probably be easiest going forward if I picked a space um, from which everything could be returned in terms of the uh, eventual set of methods. Yes, this looks like where I was floundering a bit with that decision. So the idea here is that, um, you know, I said, let's stop beating around the bush and we'll just um, pick this 3-3 where I know everything is going to be included. So now I'm just kind of thinking, okay, which of these, um, which of these sequences, are these combinations of plus or minus two or one have I not done yet? So each time I'm going to be looking at that and trying to, See that I've covered all my bases, um, adding another one here. Now you might think to yourself, wouldn't it have made more sense if I had just started from 3-3? Three, three? And um, I'm also thinking that. <laughs> Hindsight's always twenty twenty. So in retrospect, I kind of wish I had started at 3-3 uh, three, three and just sort of teased all of this out. But, you know, you kind of start off and um, make uh, improvements along these lines as you go. Um there's nothing wrong with where I started. There's still valid test cases. Uh, and, you know, you kind of learn at any point as you go, no matter how experienced you are, you're always picking up things that you wish you had done. I'll, um, I will share a bit of a secret, which is that there's pretty much no piece of code I have out there that I've written um, that I'm happy with in the sense of um, thinking that it's done or perfect. Every time I look at any code that I've written, probably any code that anybody else has written, my brain starts to think like, well, that works. You know, clearly all the tests are passing. Um, and I think it's readable maybe, but I'm sure there's something I could come up with to make it better. I have these ideas floating around in the back of my head. Um, you know, for instance, this concept of overriding equals on board coordinate that I've alluded to once or twice. Kind of wish I had done that. Um and there's any other number of ways I could probably squint at this code and think, well, let's make it a little more elegant. So what I'm doing here is um, I'm going to do the moves from 3-3 three, three thing, the thing I had sort of chastised myself for getting a little complacent with earlier. Now that I've uh, decided or had decided at the time I was coding this to orient myself around 3-3 three, three for a lot of the foreseeable future with these test methods, I've decided to eliminate this line of code that I'm going to be writing over and over again. So now these are one-liner tests. And it looks like I've got five yield returns in there. Um, so for the remaining three, I want to save myself a line of code. And now at this point, I'm just kind of glancing at it and figuring out, all right, so which which plus minus combo have I not done yet? Um, this one of... Um, <clears throat> minus one for x and minus two for y i haven't done yet so there it is i'm going to watch it go red i'm going to go figure out where i want to put this duplicate the line which um is kind of a cheat <laughs> in as much as i've talked about wanting to uh eliminate duplication by uh forcing myself to type and feel the pain once again i am balancing pragmatism with um you know the the best practice or ideal practice and what I'm doing here is not quite right, but it's, you know, I guess pragmatic. The duplication that I'm tolerating by virtue of this Code Rush keyboard shortcut is the duplication of return new board coordinate and a starting location dot X and Y. 
So in looking at this and watching myself coding, the better thing to do would probably be to define some silly as it sounds, little static method that just took, um, you know, the integer offsets as methods for X and Y, or I'm sorry, as arguments for X and Y, and then did all of the uh, return new board coordinates starting X, starting Y. Of course, then I would have to pass it starting X, starting Y. So, you know, you get into this trade-off between uh, avoiding duplication and readability. So do I really want to define some uh, method that takes four parameters? I'm not really sure. And those are the kind of things I think about um, and that I was mentioning when I say I'm always looking at my code and even if it's passing all the tests and even if it's pretty readable, I'm still thinking to myself, I, I bet this could be better. So I don't know exactly how to make this better, but looking at all these yield return statements is ugly. And um, the fact that I'm hitting control enter or whatever it is that does that duplicate line, I actually have to do it. I can't, I don't even know off the top what I do. I just do it. Um, you know, that's, that's not great. And I think there's probably a better way. I happen not to know what that is at the moment and not really particularly ashamed of it. If you're a regular follower of my blog, you probably saw that post I did a while back, um, where I talked about being content that I can always make things better, even if they're not the greatest right now is the way I avoid paralysis by analysis. And that's what I'm doing here. Sure. This could be better, but it's working. And, um, if the need arises or I get particularly fidgety about how it is, I'll go make it better. Anyway, back to the, um, you know, actual action going on here. Um, what I'm doing is, um, putting in this check to say, Let's not return any illegal things because there's nothing guarding against that right now. And um, the best way I can think to do is instead of all these yield returns, I'm going to build a list and that's going to get rid of that black line of uh, non-code coverage at the end. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking there's probably some cool link stuff I can do to make this happen, but I'll get to that later. Also, here's something cool you're going to love me for if um, if you aren't familiar with it. In Visual Studio, hold down Alt, and I'm about to do it again in a second here. If you hold down Alt and then drag the mouse cursor, you can actually delete in rectangles within the IDE. So check this out. You can delete all of those, or you can paste or do whatever. You actually have the ability to like um, magically handle squares of text. So that's how I did that. I believe Alt and click. Um, if I'm wrong, maybe I'll post a correction, but that is a wonderful thing to know in the oddball situation that you have, like the one I just had. Um, I was absolutely tickled when I discovered that some time back. So anyway, back to the point. Um, I'm now building this into a list and then returning a filtered version of the list. Um, this gets rid of my non-coverage and it lets me color this thing green. So now I've got a little bit of uh, housekeeping to do before I let you go. One thing that I'm going to mention here is that I want to you know, maybe get a little more linky, as I like to say, um, in this method. I'm not, I'm not hugely thrilled about this, and I'm thinking there's probably some way of iterating over the pluses and minuses and twos and ones. Maybe not, but maybe, maybe I can define a handful of sequences or something that make this more functional instead of just building the list. Um, something to look at for next time. The other thing I want to talk about here is uh, moving Knight to its own class. Seems I've been forgetting to do that the last few times and leaving it for next time. So I'm going to put that in and then I'm going to call it an episode. So I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.